Hey, Kitty Pies. I'm just hanging out and uh, making smart tonight. So what I did here was uh, I made a piece with a really weird sort of uh, noise painting that I was just, um, I don't know what I was thinking, but it came out really nice in the background. And so that's where I was thinking about starting this piece. Now, first thing I'm going to do is try to get uh, sort of a model for a face, something a little more accurate than I would draw myself. And what we're going to do is sort of try to generate that, maybe with ASCII art. It's really interesting, really, to uh, try to see what Stable Diffusion does with languages. Things like ASCII art uh, are strange to begin with, as far as art goes. Because you know Stable Diffusion's seen it. But the question is, can it recreate it well? And I think the answer is mostly no. I think that's what we discovered here. But it was totally worth a shot. For sure. So we're going to come up with it soon. I think we got interrupted one more time. There we go. And I think we're going to have it. Not that. Well, we're going to save that, but we're going to have it pretty soon. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's the one. There we go. That's a pretty good half of face. We could work with that. I like the composition of it. So I think that's the one that we're probably going to go with. We could time lapse the rest of it. Or not. Because, yeah, never mind. We don't need to. So now we paste it in, stretch it out. And that gives us the basis of something to work it with. So now we're going to color correct it and try to set it maybe as an overlay. It's going to get complicated. There we go. Now we can adjust it. Negative has this interesting look to it. So we're going to put it down here. And then what we're going to do is sort of blur out what's under it. So the face doesn't get lost. And uh, after that, we're going to cut the face right in half. And now we box. Boxes are sort of shorthand. And uh, what they do is they, they tell us there's depth and texture. All right, now we're cutting the face in half. Now we flip. All right. Now we color correct. It's really easy because the work was already done for us. And now we blend. Da 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 da. Now I'm going to draw a bunch of lines to connect them. This is the fun part. I like it this way. Cute little eyebrows, some bangs, get her face shape going. Gotta have cheekbones, because these things never look right without cheekbones. And now we draw some hair, and we tie the hair to our boxes. I'm hoping that what that gives us is sort of a nice, tight curl. Um, just sort of given the context, I'm thinking... That's probably how that's going to turn out. So, uh, but it's not enough. We need more. So what we're going to do uh, here in a minute is uh, generate some more textures. And uh, that's going to be pretty cool, I think. You know, this kind of art is so, so exciting. It just is. This is, I don't remember if this is either at like two or three times the speed I normally work. So what I'm doing is deceiving you into uh, making this look really easy. But um, I feel like there's some process here, just in general. I'm playing with blurs and, uh, and noise at the moment. And I'm trying to get the glow and the shading of it right. 
Um, one observation I've made about stable diffusion is the uh, distance between the forehead and the hairline uh, will either come out as like a turn of the head or uh, a tilt of the head. And it's really sort of interesting uh, to see how stable diffusion interprets 2D images like that. And it sort of uh, converts them, I think. Um, somebody told me today that I make 3D paintings. And I, I thought that was really cool. People ha have really interesting ways of like describing what I do that like I never would have thought thought of. Like, for example, this afternoon, I got a uh, really nice, just a really fun YouTube comment. And uh, I'll, I'll put it on screen here. They said, yo, this is wild. Logo graphic engineering for assets. Next level shit. There's a dimensionality to this that I never even considered. I've been playing past the football where... I feed my things into the AI, paint over it, paint over what it gives me and feed it back through, paint over it and what it gives me and dancing well. But this gives me even more ideas. And I thought that was really cool that I inspired him. For them, I'm sorry. I, it's a cartoon avatar. I'm just going to use they, them, unless I know. And uh, yeah, I thought that was really cool. Uh, the problem is uh, I had not heard the term logo graphic before and uh, what it turns out is that a uh, logo graphic is a uh, graphic shorthand for language sort of like uh, how do you explain it even it's it's a, a word or it's a symbol that is shorthand for a word and I thought the comparison was not only accurate but really thought-provoking anyway uh back to our video what i'm doing here is uh i'm uh, I'm, I'm using layers of light and skin tone and shading uh, we're piling our light shading on top of our dark shading which we've already blurred well that's the trick to doing skin in photoshop or any program like it really is uh what you do is layers of of toning and blurring and that's how you get skin and then what you do is you just control the different amounts of it and you add and remove your noise until you get um the composition that you want it's it's actually the easiest thing in the world um i highly recommend everybody uh, developing a process that uh, they like for that So now we're going to zoom out and I'm going to start painting the hair. Uh, we've got our boxes and we've got our first layer of hair. Now our second layer of hair sort of is there to really just make it look more organic and maybe interconnect with some of the boxes that we missed. Remember this is wavy, curly, beautiful hair. Not squiggly lines. I mean nothing against squiggly lines and all okay so back to stable diffusion um i'm gonna photo bash a few more textures um and what i want here is something really sort of twisty and wiry for the hair i think that's gonna make a huge difference there's this one texture that, I, that comes up frequently it's like this oh there it is that's the one. It looks almost like fur. There we go. Look at that sexiness. That one is perfect. So now we interrupt. We pull the one we want. We paste it in. We stretch it out because it don't matter. And now yeah there we go oh look at that hotness okay now we erase the face and we try to isolate that texture mainly to the sections of hair 
So while we're here, let's get some booby armor. I figure booby armor, even if you don't end up using booby armor on your final product, um, it's useful for things like shading and, you know, breast position and stuff like that. So you always, theoretically at least, have a reason to create booby armor. So never feel bad about your booby armor. All right, we are about there. We refresh our seed and we refine our query just a little bit. I think we just need to be a little more specific here. So we're just gonna go for a more, you know, punky sort of spacey look. And that should give us about what we need, I think. It's funny, you know, this, this is the, uh, my face is up here prompt. Because <laughs> it's actually pointing down and focusing on the chest. Which is interesting. There we go, that's nice. That is hotness right there. And there we go. Booby. <laughs> yep, there we go. So we're going to take that, and we're going to take that, and we're going to move that, and we're going to place that. And la la la. Drop it there. And now we're going to delete some stuff. Papers. Layer one. Layer two. Chop it off. Chop, chop it off. This is fun to do. Now we adjust colors, add some noise, adjust our noise, move our lighting around, and what I'm doing here is creating the illusion of light. I'm going to just draw some big thick white lines. And then I'm going to composite them with one of the settings in the uh, color management thing. There we go. And uh, there you have it. You don't have to make those blurry. Alrighty. Now we take that line. And we're going to stretch it. And we're going to try to place our boob shaping in. If we're lucky, we might even get some of that extra detail there. Incidentally, uh, this is basically uh, sort of an automated version of, you know, photo bashing processes that have been around uh, for years and years. And some of them are actually quite popular. I'd say the difference between this and regular photo bashing is uh, just how seamlessly everything integrates in the end. You know, like when you're regular photo bashing, um, what you're doing is you're using distorts and you're using filters and you're going through a lot of complicated Photoshop processes to get that thing to look right. Um, and the result can look good, but it's never quite as smooth as it is with AIs. I think um, the big difference between quote unquote hashtag human artist, you know, quasi fascist cult members um, and us, I mean, in, just in terms of um, aesthetics and the art in general, is that uh, things that are painted with AI are usually clearer and crisper uh, than they are when uh, you make them with conventional tools. 
Um, and I think, you know, if you are going to talk about an AI aesthetic, I think that's what causes it because there are so many different aesthetics, uh, in AI artwork that it's, it's really hard to sort of pin down one as an artist and say, okay, that's it. But, you know, on the other hand, I, I think the, the crispness of it is very, very obvious once you know what to look for. You know, uh, all these other guys, uh, the ones that pride themselves on being too, you know, spot quote unquote fake AI art, uh, they never, ever, ever talk about that, even though it's like the defining quality of the medium. I feel like if they ever talked about that, though, they, they would have to admit that, and that would make them so angry. <laughs> Anyway, we've put our girl in the machine, and we're running her against the uh, anything model. And now what I'm doing is running a batch of six, uh, which should hopefully give us something pretty good at this noise level. Obviously, uh, I'm iffy on uh, just the levels of piracy with anything V3. Um, so I really only use it for, like, sketching out details. I'll never use it in a final render. I like that last one a lot. Isn't, he, isn't she a cutie? I'm going to revisit her. But the one we're picking up is uh, actually the first one. So now we're going to switch back to pulp art diffusion. We're going to turn our noise down so that all we get is the minimal stylistic changes. And then we're going to run another batch. Very nice. These are all cute. Turning up the noise a little more just to see what happens. Uh, with something like this, it's bound to get goofy. So just if you see nudity or, you know, dancing frogs, I'm sorry. <laughs> now we're going to save that and we're going to upscale it. Because what we want to do actually is uh, make our target image just a little bit bigger. When we do that, we can um, sort of get a better level of detail and resolution and the eyes will look better and the face details uh, will just look cleaner and crisper. Uh, the size of it uh, really does matter. And truth be told, if I had a more powerful uh, computer, I would actually be larging, I'd actually be um, running image uh, generations that are much larger um, but I have a six-year-old graphics card in my computer my poor little computer is a toaster so sad I think we're gonna use that one for now now we're gonna use the uh, noiseless upscaler all right, I like it. So something interesting happened when uh, when I made this. After I made it, I posted it on Twitter, and I like to keep pieces I I made on Twitter so I could sort of look at them for about ten or twenty minutes, just watching them sort of hang there in the ether and. My little self-hating critical eye will, uh, will, you know, find every flaw and every error and, you know, sometimes like tonight I'll look at it and say, you know, I've done this theme so many times, you know, maybe I just need to do something else, you know? But the joy of noise painting is that it has two components. You have the image that you're feeding it and image to image. But the other thing you're doing that's interesting about noise painting is that in addition to that, you're describing the image. And if you want to change big things about it, all you have to do is reuse that noise painting and you end up with a completely diff different image 
on a completely different prompt. So what's interesting here is what happened. Now we're going to flip the photo, and there you go. Um, I felt like we got off to a really strong start when I made this. Um, so what I did was I put it through about like maybe six rounds of refinement and additional sketching. Um, if I have sketches, I'll put them on screen right now so you can sort of see what I did. Um, I had to work with her eyebrows because uh, for some reason pulp art diffusion at higher noise uh, removal settings, what it does is it, it likes to draw extra sets of eyebrows and sometimes it draws people in weird places. <laughs> like we were looking at earlier um or wow just like we're looking at now actually that's crazy i didn't even notice that was there anyway uh so that's it that's both pieces and uh i hope that this video provided some insight on my process and i just want to tell you that you're beautiful i mean that sincerely you're beautiful, and you personally are my favorite. I love you. And uh, I'm glad that you like to stop by and have these little talks with me. I enjoy doing them, so uh, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, love or hate my little video. Uh, it all helps me out. So uh, I'll talk to you babies later. Always stay inspired. <laughs>